Okay, we have uh, 7.02 p.m. This is the uh, Menden Board of Health. We have uh, participating tonight on the call at the moment. We have Alan Greenberg, who is the Vice Chairman, and uh, myself. This is Tom Fichter, Board of Health member. Before we get into the uh, agenda, there's just a, an introduction that we need to read as this meeting is being held remotely. Okay. Uh, this open meeting of the Menden Board of Health is being conducted remotely, consistent with Governor Baker's updated guidance on holding meetings pursuant to the Act extending certain COVID-19 measures that was signed into law on June 16, 2021. This Act includes an extension until July 15, 2022 of the remote meeting provisions of his March 12, 2020 Executive Order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law. The order allows public bodies to meet entirely remotely, so long as reasonable public access is afforded, so that the public can follow along with the deliberations of the meeting. For this meeting, the Menden Board of Health is convening by video telephone conference, as posted on the town's website, identifying how the public may join. This meeting will feature public comment. Okay, so that's the introduction. Fantastic. Nice job, Tom. Oh, thank you. Yes, I'm recovering from some dental work today, so. <laughs> well, I, I hope they gave you a, a lollipop or a ring or whatever they give these days. You know, it's funny. Back in the day, that's what they used to do, and you'd, you'd think, knowing all that we know now about sugar, that dentists wouldn't do that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> well, my, my, my dentist used to give rings like plastic rings. Nice. So nice. Uh, you either got a, a guy ring or a girl ring back in the day. All right, cool. All right, so it's just you and I tonight that I'm seeing. I haven't seen anybody uh, chime in on the call, so we can- Yeah, I haven't seen little, anybody pop up on my screen. It'll probably be somewhat informal here. Um, I'll let you start it off how, you, how we want to to hit the agenda. Sure. Uh, the first thing on the agenda was to update on tobacco enforcement. Um, as I uh, alluded to, uh, unfortunately, she was unable to attend tonight's meeting, and we will put her on the agenda for our next meeting. Uh, I have heard from the town of Uxbridge uh, that her, her and her uh, associates are doing a phenomenal job there. Um, Recently, they did a sting, and I believe uh, they handed out five $1,000 fines. Um, she has two people uh, working in this area, and uh, per my phone call with her two weeks ago, uh, or a little more than two weeks ago, um, they not only do enforcement, but they also do education. Um, they have an education uh, packet that they hand out to the vendors um, when they meet with them. Uh, so I really thought that, you know, uh, just a matter of us connecting. Um, but I really thought that that was uh, exceptional. The fact that, you know, their goal is to uh, educate the vendors, um, not go in there and just try to catch them doing something wrong. I thought that was a well-rounded approach. Uh, so she will be put on the agenda for our next meeting, Tom. All right, great, excellent. No, I agree. It sounds like a good group to connect with, and we we'll look forward to what. What is the representative's name? Out of curiosity, I believe it was Joan Hamlet. Out Joan of Hamlet. Um, Lemonster is uh, her email. I don't have her name in front of me, but uh, she has a, a Lemonster. Uh, BOH um, address that I communicate with and she is currently working for the town of Uxbridge uh, okay great that she has two representatives in this area cool awesome okay I'll take care of agenda item number one at this point yeah next item is update on hazardous waste day um i did see a few things between you and kim going back and forth but i didn't see any dates well the last i saw if i'm correct um 
Queen Hobbes was unable to provide any date at all. They did get back to Kim and they okay. were completely booked. Okay, so that's, that's, that's a disappointment, a, but at least yep. we got an answer. Correct. Wow. So I don't know if we have a, another option that we can try to exercise. Um, I don't know. Um, that would require some looking into from what I understand in that particular industry, the big fish have gobbled up the little fish. Okay. Um, so that's why you end up doing business with clean harbors. Um, they have done a good job for us in the past. Um, so for us, that hasn't been an issue until now. Um, you know, not being able to get a date is, uh, disappointing so um i know the company in uh sutton um they don't do mobile they don't come to us so yes i believe that's that's correct i've been there myself okay but, uh yeah i think it's one of those places that you have to take your materials to them and they have a warehouse there and they have people that receive your your materials yeah right from what i understand uh as a town we could give them a sum of money i believe it starts at around ten thousand dollars and then our our town's people could go there and um deposit their hazardous materials um up to a certain dollar amount per resident um, until that $10,000 was expended is the way I understand it. So that, I, I don't know if that would work for us and it certainly doesn't give us a lot of control, um, over it. Um, I mean, I, unfortunately we, you know, we have missed, I believe a hazardous waste day or the hazardous waste day has gotten put off. So if they can't give us a date, wh where are they booking now? What, what month are they booking? Would be my question. Yeah, good question. It just, uh, let me, um, pause for a second, see if I can find that. Okay. Cause I mean, maybe you if, know. could they not give us a date for August? But could they give us a date for October? I got from the emails I recall, I got the fact that they are not able, they couldn't give us a date at all for this year. Okay. Yeah. So does, does that mean we have to book them now for 2023? There's a, there's a good question. I mean, you know, maybe it's gotten to the point where the demand is so high you have to book a year in advance or 18 months in advance. If that's the case, we need to get on the, on the list. Right. Um, you know, if we're going to, you know, continue to offer this as a service to our residents. Um, I'm just scrolling down through my, yeah, like it, with when me. I saw when I saw that you and Kim were going back and forth, I didn't see any dates, so I, I was a little concerned. Um, I think all I saw was that it was, you know, she was updating you, which is appreciated. Um, but I mean, you know, how far out are they? Yeah, uh, let's see here. Let me find this. I was smart, I would have created a separate folder for hazardous waste, but I'm not smart. <laughs> <laughs> That's well well beyond my capabilities. Uh, I'm surprised I managed to get this to work uh, by myself tonight. You're batting a thousand. Uh, I guess I am batty. Where the heck did I? Of course, what I don't remember is um, who the person was that responded. Oh, you mean from Clean Harvest? Yeah, I was trying to go by the um, 
the names in the uh, in the email my email list as a lead to reference. Uh, right, right. It was only just I think it was a week before last. I want to say it was the beginning of April. Yeah, I thought what I saw was Kim was responding to you, but I I don't think I was able to follow the chain. Let's see here. Let's see if I put it under. And I'll see you. Hang on a second. One other yeah, spot. no problem. We need we need interlude music. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> One more spot I'm going to check. Yeah, no problem, Tom. What will happen is I'll probably locate it right after we end the meeting. Absolutely, that's the way it works. Only not that long ago, the week before the last. Yeah, it wasn't that long ago because I oh, know. Oh, here I we go. Oh, good. Got it. Hit me. Here we go. Let's see. All right, I'm back on four seven. Kim sent us an FYI. It was from a. From Dan Applegate at Clean Harbors. Okay. Uh, so what Dan says, he says uh, he's just apologizing for the late response. Uh, it says he took a look at the count at the schedule after talking to Kim, and unfortunately, right now they do not have any dates available for 2022. Okay. Yeah. So. Um, do we? Do you have contact information for him? I do, yeah. I've got his uh, a number and okay. his email, yeah. Uh, do we want to email him and see what's available for 2023? Yeah, I guess we could start the process. Never too early at this point, right? Yeah, and I'm, I'm thinking anywhere between, you know, May 1st and September 30th. Yeah, I think what's what seems to have worked out was um, well, we've done it a couple of different ways. We, we've done the early. Did I think we did one year? We did it early. I think yeah, I we found we, later was I, better after the summer. Well, I, I agree, but I, I guess I'm given a wide spread. I mean, unless you want to just say what's available for August of 2023, and see what we get for a response. Well, true. Yeah, I, I could. What I'll do is I can just phrase it as a general email, um, you know, just explain, you know, tell them that, you know, appreciate you getting back to us. You know, we're sorry to hear you weren't able to accommodate uh, a date this year. We'd like to take a look ahead at 2023. And, um, you know, we're looking at the uh, time frame of August, September for booking a date. Could you let us know what you might have available? Sounds good to me. Sound good. Yeah, why not? Okay. Um, you know, and then we're going to have to, you know, we're going to have to find out from them how far out we need to plan these things so that we can, uh, you know, be able to grab a date and have it on an annual basis. Right. You know, yep. If they tell us you got to book a year in advance or 18 months in advance, then you know, we're going to have to put that on the calendar and make sure that we book it. Yeah, no, true. Yeah. For some reason, I think, and I can't remember what it was, I thought somehow we may have missed one. Either that or the date changed by a couple of months. 
maybe okay. in my early, maybe in my earlier years, you know, maybe we went from May to August because we didn't book it fast enough. Uh, oh, that could have been. That's yeah, awesome. that could have been. And then um, I think it actually might have been from that fluctuation. I think we actually determined that uh, post summer was kind of a better time frame than the beginning of the summer. Right. I'm sure. I'm sure in May, in June, everybody's thinking about their vacations and getting the heck out of here. Where August, everybody is returning, coming back, thinking about getting ready for school, you know, et cetera. Yeah. Um, so we definitely get a good turnout in August. Um, in fact, maybe that's what it was. Maybe when we went from May or, you know, June, let's say to August, we crossed over the uh, the fiscal year for the town. Right. Yeah. So maybe that's, maybe that's what I'm thinking about how we, we missed one one year sort of okay because if we didn't do it before july 1st it would have bumped it into the next fiscal year for the town right yeah so maybe that's why i'm you know i'm kind of thinking we missed it we missed the opportunity one year well i guess uh in addition to reaching out to dan um I wonder if maybe I could even inquire of Dan some references for other companies if you still wanted to try to do something for this year that might be able to support it. Sounds good to me. I mean, he he may have, you know, or be willing to, you know, give us the name of another company that might be able to accommodate us. Yeah. Um, I, it doesn't hurt to ask. What's the only thing we can get? No. Right. Okay, that's worth asking. I mean, it's not like, um, again, I'm not looking to cook you out of Menden, but just wondering if you might be able to, you know, help us out with a reference this year. And of course, we'd come back to you for follow up following years. But. Yeah, I'm trying to think. Let me, uh, I'm going to grab my phone here for a second. And yeah. I'm going to Google. As of this waste companies, see what comes up. Well, that, that NEDT comes up. Now, there's a Stericycle. I've seen their trucks around. Okay. They're out of one socket, and they say they provide hazardous waste removal and disposal. Oh, okay. One socket, well, right over the border. That's what it says, yeah. Um how do you spell that? Uh, S-T-E-R-I-C-Y-C-L-E. -E. It's Terry Sagal. Okay. Um, and it lists them as being in business for 10 years out of one socket, Rhode Island. And it says hazardous waste removal and disposal. Now, I know I've seen their trucks around. And I, you know, I, I believe it was almost like they were picking up uh, medical waste. Yeah. For some reason, uh, you know, I could just be under that impression because of their name. Looks like they're open till uh, eight o'clock. Let me see if I can dial them up. Oh, there you go. Yes, you've reached the uh, Tom and Allen Board of Health TV show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
Something went wrong. Yeah, for some reason I it's I don't know if I hit a wrong button, but um it didn't dial. It went somewhere else to clean earth something. So that didn't work, but well, it's all right. I mean, I'll do a I'll do a follow up with Dan, Clean Harbors. Yeah. Um, see if I can get some insight, you know, from him on potentially other companies that he could maybe refer us to for this year yeah talk I'll, about the I'll, date I'll, I'll try to pull this company up again and get a phone number for them yeah this stericycle i know i've seen their trucks around um so that was all that really came up near us right the um clean harbor folks they, they they come from a bit of a distance to us right don't they I, I don't know. There used to be another company out there like Clean Harbors. I thought it was called, uh, was it called Zecco? Z-E-C-C-O. And then I thought maybe the one bought the other one out because I stopped seeing. I used to see them like on the side of the highway where a, a tractor trailer um, crashed. Clean oh, up wow. the diesel fuel. Okay. Let's see, let me try this again. Yeah, it says here uh, they do medical waste, that stericycle. No, so maybe they're a little more specific in their business model. Yeah, and I, I think that's why I was under that impression. Um, yeah, it looks like, uh, looks like they're in the medical waste business. No, all right. I will see, well, what, see what Dan see can what, provide. Uh, yeah, see what the, that gentleman comes back as, and I can always try to Google it again. Um, you know, and see what happens. You know, I mean, like I said, maybe you know, the demand is so high that you got to book it eighteen months in advance. Yeah, and we we didn't know that. Because we've, you know, been fairly successful booking it when we have booked it in the past, and now we got to learn a new uh, a new way of doing things. So um, the second part about hazardous waste day is also the paper shredding element, right? Correct, and uh, you know we could probably at least have that. Mm -hmm. um, I don't see why we couldn't. Yeah, I mean that's that's who that's the real Harvey, right? Anyway, so uh, I guess we could still, even if we if we couldn't get a company to handle the hazardous waste portion, still pursue Harvey coming in with their paper shredder truck to that yeah, piece. I, when, uh, the seniors seem to really like that, and I know you had a conversation with Jody uh, that she has a need for that. Yeah. Um, and I mean, we could just, you know, really, if that's all we can, uh, do in 2022, then so be it. And we'll just, 
you know, publish the heck out of it and try to get a really good turnout. Right. Yeah. Okay. I mean, the, the EL Harvey does a great job for us. They always send a, a very courteous, you know, operator. So um, I would definitely do that at minimum. Okay. Uh, and then, well, let's see what we find out from what I find out from Dan and then determine from that conversation if we have an opportunity to combine or, or if we're just running solo with um, paper shredding and then we can talk about a date for paper shredding. That you know, it becomes a little bit more of a flexible element maybe than the hazardous waste component. Well, absolutely. I mean, we could actually, um, you know, reach out to EL Harvey and find, see what works good for them. And as long as we have enough time to, to publish it and promote it, we could, you know, do whatever works good for them. Yep, agreed. Okay. You know, I mean, if they give us a date the end of June, let's say, um, Go for it. Why not? Right. Yeah. Um, and, and again, we just need to promote the heck out of it. So we probably need, you know, maybe 30 day minimum. To promote it. Yeah. I I'd, I'd even say, well, if you want to start early. The month before by putting the advertisement like in the crier. Oh, yeah. A I mean, I'd times, like, you know, I'd, yeah, I'd like to have more than 30 days to promote it, but if, if, you know, if that's what it came down to, 30 days I would think would be adequate. Yep. Um, but I, I would definitely not let that opportunity go away. I think that's a call to, uh, I think that's a Mike Sespan. I, I agree. Okay. Do we, uh, we put AJ on that? Yeah, there you go. Well, I'm thinking after you, you know, after you get a reply to your email from to Clean Harbors, what we're right. gonna know, we're gonna know what's going on. Yeah. Um, and then we can, you know, AJ can reach out to Mike and uh, negotiate a date for shredding. And as long as, like I said, if we have, as long as we have a minimum of 30 days to promote it, let's let's go. Yep. Okay. And, uh, you know, at least, you know, not let that opportunity slip by. Right. All right. Okay. So you're going to you're going to reach out by email to Clean Harbors again and um, get a little more information uh, and possibly um, a recommendation if they have one available. And after that, we'll uh, talk with AJ about reaching out to Mike. At EL Hobby, because we'll have more information at that time. All right, it's a plan. Awesome. All right, next uh, thing was to discuss the contract extension with EL Hobby. Good segue. Yeah. All right. Well, is this something that uh, we really should have all three of us on the call for? I I agree. Um, so do we want to skip over it? Um, so the only thing that I know becomes, we have a sense of urgency is, well, getting the contract so that we know the numbers. Okay. At, at this point, obviously we're not considering um, another vendor. Correct. Right. Right. Well, we oh. we already we already voted to extend it, or to take this last extension. I I got the sense we were already aren't we already in the last extension, or is it one more year? No, I believe it starts in July. Oh, okay. So we're in the second to last extension. Right. So I believe we already voted to uh, accept the extension. All right. So if that's the case, then we got to have the. Uh, those numbers are already somewhere. Well, yeah, I, I, the numbers are probably already in the original contract. I forget what 
because there was a you know a bump every year. There was, yeah. So we either need to find the contract, or we need to reach out to Mike. Yeah, I, I mean, I could do a search in, in the PC in the office and see if I see a something that stands out where something's been highlighted. Yeah, the only other place that it might be is um, it might already be uh, in our budget. All right, well, this is true. Yep. Because um, obviously it, it has to be in there for the next fiscal year for us to have the money, you know, that number has to show up somewhere, even though we raise the money. Yep. No, that's true. And I, I thought the only other thing we need, other than the, the, the contract for the trucking with EL Harvey, was we need to have uh, an idea what our prior year's tonnage was. Right? Or am we I needed, confused? We needed that for, for Harvey? No, we needed that in order to price the subscriber's fee. Oh, um, I, I, you know, I was under the impression that I didn't realize it was, it was a combination. So you think it's a combination of the Harvey contract and Willabrator costs that we divvy up? Well, yeah, because that's the that gives us the total cost. Okay. And the, you know, so we, we use, you know, and uh, I would say we'd have to use like an average of the prior two years tonnage. Why did I think that it was always just based on the Harvey contract and, and what we would well, do is simply budget an X amount of dollars for the tonnage piece for wheel operator as part of the budget. Right. But if it was part of the budget, that would, the, then the tonnage would come from the taxpayers, not the subscribers. Well, the, the tonnage comes from the subscribers because, I mean, they're the ones producing the tonnage. Correct. The ones that have signed up for the program, right? Right. But And, and every year, our tonnage price changes based on that 10-year agreement. Okay. So we not only need to know how many tons we dumped because we pay Willabrator for that, but we have to also know what next year's rate is for the tonnage. Okay. Well, that's going to... We're dumping. I'm trying to remember. It's like just the just the wheel abrader bill is a couple thousand a week. Oh, is it per week? Yeah. Okay. Because I actually saw a bill and I thought it was $8,000 for three weeks, and the bill needed to be paid. Oh, you might have been right. That might have come on an email that I sent off to uh, to the town hall. Right. This was very early, uh, yep. you know, in what, you know, in our our loss of an administrative assistant. Um, I, I believe that was only three weeks, too, and it was eight grand. Okay. So, I mean, if, if I just do the half uh we do get over here we do eight thousand divide that by three and multiply that times fifty two I mean that that's a hundred and thirty nine thousand dollars just for Willabrator. So take the hundred and thirty nine and divide it by um Say eighteen hundred. Uh, looks like uh, seventy seven dollars. Okay, so maybe that is correct. I was just I was just trying to get an idea. That's roughly how many households we have on the program. Right, right. Right. So yeah. seventy seven dollars of a bill that was this past year was two eighty six. So I guess that would make sense. The remainder of it then must be the, the Harvey contract piece. Right. Got yeah, it. Harvey bills us just for the trucking. Wheel of Breda bills, bills us for the tonnage. But in order to get an accurate number, like I said, we probably need to know the total tonnage for two 
12 month periods. And then take an average. Yeah, that would make sense, which I think you know, that's what Missy typically because, had done. Right, because the, 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 the wheel of a fee isn't fixed. Correct. And then once we get the tonnage number, then we have to know what next year's tonnage fee is because over that 10 year contract, it changes every year. That's right. So EL Harvey's portion is easy. That's a fixed cost. It's divided by how many subscribers and we have to, you know, probably guesstimate a little bit as to how many subscribers we think we're going to have. I mean, we do have a lot of new people jumping on. So that's going to cut the trucking cost, but it's also going to increase the tonnage. So there's, there's, there's a little bit of thought you have to put into it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you're right. Um, and it seems like a lot of people have jumped on recently, and I'm assuming, you know, it's all this new construction. Between, you know, the, that big development up off of North, uh, North Bridge Road, and then you got little ones like the one off of Providence, and I don't know what else is coming online. Uh, we got those condos over uh, Dudley Road. Off of Dudley Road, there those duplex condos. Where's uh, Where's Dudley? Dudley is right on the Menden Hopedale line. You actually have to go through Hopedale to get to Dudley Road. Down by the drive-in. Okay, so you go you go past the drive-in, go up the hill. Take. Uh, go past the drive-in, go up the hill. Just about the time you get to Hopedale, you bang a left on Westcott. Yep. Okay. And then you bang a left on Dudley. Oh, that's Dudley. Okay, got it. And off of Dudley is that uh, Bedrosian built those duplexes. I think they're fully occupied now, so people may already be on our list. I don't know. Right. Okay. So, um, like I said, we 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 kind of have to get some numbers for like the last two years for all these things you know tonnage for 12 month periods subscribers for 12 month periods um get some averages and decide whether or not we think those averages are going to go up or down so it, it, there's a little bit of thought to it to come up with that number in order to send out those bills. I mean, that's my take on it. I could be way off. Well, I know it sounds accurate to me. So what would you say the direction should be? Well, we need, we need access to that information and I, I don't know where that information is. Like I said, we need we need the tonnage for the last two 12 month periods. We need the number of subscribers for the last two 12 month periods. And of course, one of those periods isn't over yet. It won't be over till June 30. Correct. Uh, we need to know what the next year's tonnage fee is going to be. Um, per ton up at Wheel of Breda. We need to know what the contract extension price is for that 12 months. So there's, you know, quite a bit of information we need in order to come up with a subscriber price. And, you know, I know Missy always had a knack for, um, being able to guesstimate what the increase would be that, you know, like the increase in subscribers or, I mean, the other numbers she could access, right? 
they lose your time? Tom? Tom, are you still there? There you are. Yeah, geez, sorry about that. I um, no problem. I was getting lonely. <laughs> I was going to take a peek to see if I could pop into our PC remotely, and I hit the wrong tab and cut off the meeting call. Ah, uh, yeah, that's all right. I'm I'm recorded in space all by myself, saying, <laughs> "Where'd you go?" <laughs> so, well, the, well, maybe what I can do is do a little searching of um, the PC and see if I can find a couple of folders that reference Wheel of Greater and some budgetary uh, um, breakdowns. Yeah, I mean, that's the only thing I can think of. I mean, if someone asked me to come up with an estimate, that's the information I would want to have. Right. Give someone an, an estimate. But then ultimately, it's going to be up to us to... Um, we could be giving that rate to the accounting people so they could do the billing. Correct. Yeah. Okay. But like I said, um, once we, we come up with those averages, we have to kind of use the crystal ball to see what the, what we think the future is going to be. I mean, like during COVID, our tonnage went up. Right, yeah. Most most people were home. Right. So, you know, but people were doing, you know, projects. Because if not, we'll come up short. Correct. Right. All right. Well, we'll. We'll have to do a little digging, I think. Okay. I, I mean, I think we still have a little bit of a window here because I, uh, I think the bills would need to go out. Um, well, I want to say mid-May. Sounds so right. We have about a month because then the uh, our accounting people they turn it over to. Uh, Kelly Ryan. Yeah, they once they do their thing internally, then they turn over to Kelly and Ryan for submission of the actual bills to the public. Right. Okay. I mean, that info information has to be somewhere. Oh, yeah. Yep. And, I mean, some of it is going to be easier to find than others. Well, another... Main source could actually also be Kim. Uh, correct, but remember, she's going away. True. True. So I think she's leaving Friday. 
Yes, you're correct. It is Friday. So we have just, to get just for the week, her. right? Uh, I thought it was two weeks. Oh, two weeks. Okay. So we'd have to get to her right away. Yeah. Okay. Well, I think we could probably come up come up with it. Just a dual digging. That's all. Try to use the time wisely. Right. Well, I, I know she's going to be reachable for a, a period of time, but not the whole time that she's gone. Okay. But I, I mean, like I said, I, if someone would have asked me to give them a give a price, I'd need some background information in order to give them an, an accurate price so that I'm not overcharging them or undercharging them. Correct. Yeah. All right. So. We'll have to put that sure. on our next agenda. Yeah, I'll probably keep this topic as a, as a placeholder for the next couple of meetings. You know, so we get yep. everything, you know, finalized and we know that we got the answers and. Uh, mid mid May is going to come quick. That's only two meetings away. Yeah, I know it. Yeah. Okay. All right. So. We probably talked about talk that one out. I'll put it on the agenda for next meeting. Okay. So next is discuss process of handling report for Menden landfill. Yeah, so what prompted that is um, an email had come through. Let me see if I can bring that up. Stand by. I will. All right, so we've gotten an email from Adrian Adrian Nee. This was uh, last week. Okay, from uh, let's see here. Yeah, it's actually a, a follow up. He had actually been trying to connect with Missy for actually a few months. Yeah, well, I can see how that could happen. Yeah. Um, so he found the he was he was sending emails to Missy's email account, which is why we weren't seeing them in the BOH email. Gotcha. Because he's so used to dealing with Missy. Sure. And he hadn't been hearing back. So then he sent one to our email, the Board of Health email. And uh, he just says here, um, this says Jackson just came in on uh, Monday. Uh, I have completed the soil gas monitoring at the former amended landfill. I typically address the draft report to Missy. However, I have not heard back from her. I'm wondering if she is still receiving emails. Was I responded to um, Adrian to, uh, to let her know what our situation was here? Gotcha. 
Um, and he just mentioned, not sure if it's a, actually a, what the gender is. It, the spelling of the name is A-D-R-I-E-N-N-E. -N -N -E. Okay. Um, could be so either. Could be either, right? Yeah, yeah, project manager for, for Atlas is the company that does the work for us. Okay, so they're, our, they're not from the state, they're our contractor. Yes, there's somebody that we've been sourcing out this landfill. Gotcha. Testing for 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 years, um, and then he, uh, the person goes on to state: upon approval from Missy or someone on her behalf, uh, they will submit the attached report to the Massachusetts Department of Protection. Okay, well, then, what was the whole name? Adrian Me. Adrian, and the last name is actually might be Key. It's K E E. Okay. Uh, this person's a project manager with Atlas. Okay. And then I just responded, just, you know, letting this person know the update, um, what happened with Missy and so forth. And just that uh, I was going to look to discuss it with uh, the rest of the board to see how we wanted to address the need. So I don't know if this is something that maybe do we need to evaluate? This because I don't ever recall this necessarily coming before us in the past. No, no. I mean, so he's just looking for us to sign so that he can submit it. Uh, basically, he's just looking for approval. Yeah, on the uh, report that this person attached here in the email. Let me just open up the. Uh... Yeah, because I'm going to say, I mean. I. I whatever the results are is what the results are right and he's you said he's studying he's testing for gas so um, it, it must be methane oh uh, yeah probably yeah so there must be you know if we saw the results it's either within the limits or not because this this ultimately goes to um i don't know if you remember the name jim mcquade Yes, yes, DEP. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he's a section chief at uh, DEP, and specifically, Jim is a guy I've been dealing with right. off and on, actually, on um, on the landfill um, about testing and and whatnot, because, you know, we've been doing this testing for, it's been, oh God, 30 years. Right, and, 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 and I remember you were trying to see if we could either be done with it or you know, cut it back. Yeah, Jim, Jim had confirmed in a past conversation we, we probably couldn't never be done with it. Really? But he saw that based on what he looked at, he, he thought there was areas of testing that could be cut back. Okay. Or possibly eliminated. Yeah, because isn't that like 10000 a year? Yeah, it's a pretty good chunk of change. Yeah, in our budget. Yeah. Yeah, it's a separate line item in the budget. And, you know, I thought it was like a 30-year period we were obligated to do that. I mean, it's not even our land. It, well, it's not. I mean, it falls under the, the auspices of the town. Right, but I mean, it was the, the landowner that made all the money. Well, yeah. Kind of crazy. Oh, they're, they're, they're looking to the town, I guess, in, oh, in this, I these cases, right? They look to the town and the, the private, the private, the private element is long gone, right? Well, yeah, and I, I think because they called it the Mended Town Dump. That's, yeah. uh, that, that's what happens. But um, is there a, any testing results in that report? Well, let's just see here. Let me... Uh, Run through this real quick. So it says, uh, Dear Mr. McQuaid, Atlas Technical, uh, parentheses Atlas, as successor in interest to ATC Group. Oh, that's right. ATC Group was the original name. That's the one I actually remembered. So it must have become Atlas, because ATC gotcha. Group Services was the name I remembered. I gotcha. Yeah. So there uh, it goes on to say, is contracted by the town amendment to perform biannual groundwater monitoring and quarter quarterly soil gas methane monitoring at the former, land, at the former amended landfill. 
this letter is a summary of findings of soil gas methane monitoring performed by Atlas on March 2nd, 2022. Uh, and then goes on to give um, some logistical information about where the landfill is located. Um, and then what Atlas did as far as measuring, Atlas measured ambient temperature, barometric pressure, wind velocity, and direction at the six soil gas points using field instruments on March 2nd, 2022. Soil gas and ambient methane and oxygen concentrations were measured with a handheld Lantec air analyzer. Um, the ambient and soil gas methane concentrations measured on March 2nd, 2022 were less than detectable at each of the monitored landfill gas monitoring points. That's a good thing. Yeah, that sounds good to me. Uh, no methane, hydrogen sulfide, or volatile organic compounds, parentheses VOCs, have been detected in any of the soil gas points since monitoring with handheld instruments was initiated in June of 2008. And it goes on to say the soil gas and ambient monitoring readings are summarized on table one. So there's a, there's a chart. That is attached. Actually, he's got a few documents attached to this letter. Okay, so what is Atlas looking for us to do? So, basically, on what Adrian had said, basically, I guess their practice had been they would come to us, and I guess namely Missy, right? Let them let us know that we've done the that the report's done, and then basically looking for our quote unquote stamp of approvals to say, yep, send that report off to Jim. Well, I mean, based on what you're reading to me, um, it sounds like a, a, a clean bill of health. Um, yeah, as far as uh, that's, that goes, let's see. Um, it says uh, future groundwater monitoring will be performed biannually as stated in the consent order executed between Mass DEP and the town of Menden and per mass DEP requirements. Future soil gas methane monitoring, parentheses field screening only, will also be performed quarterly per mass DEP requirements. The next biannual round of groundwater monitoring and quarterly round of soil gas methane monitoring is scheduled for June of 2022. Okay. Okay, so, and then the reason, and then it just provides the, uh, you know, the map of the area, um, kind of a uh, architectural drawing of the layout of all the, the test wells. Yeah. Um, and the landfill where it's positioned then provides a uh, summary of soil gas monitoring results. It's just a, it's a big table with all sorts of measurements and readings and calculations on it. Sure. So, no, I mean, even if it wasn't good news, we, we still are obligated to forward it off. Yeah, and like I said, I, I can't recall this ever coming before us, so I think it's probably a case when Missy said, yep, go ahead. I mean, there's no, uh, like I said, I don't think there was any element that the locals needed to be right. concerned with other than being aware of what is happening at the landfill in this report. Right, I, I think- Pretty uh, good. I, you know, it, it, I, you know, if you want to respond, you know, via email and just say that, you know, it was discussed at, at this date, you know, and please, you know, forward to the appropriate uh, agency. Yep. Yeah, it's essentially what I, I told them. I said we'd be uh, talking about it and then I'll, I'll uh I gave him my uh, cell number, so it's uh, okay. that's what I'll do. I'll leave me on the back, him or her. Yeah, I think, and... yeah, I, I think my only concern is where this is going to continue. Yeah, uh, is I, I just hope that you know I don't know what the expense is going to climb to. We know everything is on the increase, so because I I don't have the bill in front of me. Um, we, we have to make sure that, you know, at, at budget time, we, uh, you know, put the right amount of money in our budget to continually keep testing. Yeah, that's a good point. 
I mean, I, I it sounds like I for some reason I, I remember a number of like ten thousand dollars, and that's been covering it. But I don't know, you know, I don't know how long it's going to cover it with the way things are, you know, costs are increasing. Yeah, right. I got, I got a feeling that Missy had a pretty good buffer on that. Okay. But of course, it's easy enough to find out based on all the bills that have been submitted historically. Correct. Most, most, Correct. most just, importantly, what's most recent, most most recently been submitted, right? Right. Well, and they're doing one test four times a year and one test twice a year. Right. So, I mean, if we had, um, if we had a bill for each, we could build off of that because we know one test is done twice a year and one test is done four times a year. I'd say probably, probably wants another conversation or reach out to Jim. I haven't talked to him in a while. I think that conversation of cutting back or being able to cut back on the uh, testing kind of got dropped when the COVID hit us. Right. Well, and that's understandable, but you're right. I mean, if, if, if things have been clear since 2008, that's a long time. Yes, it is. Yeah. Yep. So, you know, maybe the test that's being done biannually could be done annually. And the one that's being done quarterly could be done biannually. Yeah. So what I'll do is I'm just making a note for so, myself. I mean, that, would, that would cut our expense in half. Right. I'm going to, um, so what I'll do is I'll send uh, uh, Adrian a confirmation that the board is approved. Do we want to take a vote on this? Um, or just know that we're good? I mean, it does, really doesn't well, yeah, sound I mean, like it's doing, ever come from do. to us before yeah, anyway. Yeah, I, we're legally obligated to forward this information. For sure. So we're just, you know, because he reached out to us, and not our administrative assistant, which we don't have at the time, where we're saying, yeah, pa pass it on. Thank you for, you know, uh, you know, updating us on, you know, what the current status, testing status is. Okay. So I, yep. I don't think it's anything that we're really making a, a decision on. This is true. That requires true. a vote. Yep, I agree. Okay. Uh, I, so. I, again, especially where we're legally obligated to share that information. Right. And like you I know. said, there's, there was nothing that I could think of that had come before us before where, where any kind of local input was required to either add to the report or to augment the report in any way. I think it was probably a, a, just a course of action, almost like a rubber stamp where Missy would say, oh, great. Thank you very much. Send this along to Jim. Right, right. Right. Yeah, it was like like many things. It was just part of the workday. Correct. Yep. All right. So I'll I'll email Adrian um, to move that along, and then what I'll also do is on the heels of that, I'll reach back out to Jim McQuaid and actually use this discussion as a reference to bring back up previous discussion about any kind of test modification or reduction. Right. From his perspective, that could be that could be implemented. I, I agree. Yeah, OK. OK. Ready for the next one? Sure. Discuss municipal master agreement. And you'll have to tell me what that is. Yeah, well, uh, that came on the heels of an email as well. Let me see. Yeah, okay, I got it. An email that came to us on Monday. Uh, ch -ch -ch -ch. Tom, thank you very much for all the extra effort you've been putting in. It's really appreciated. Oh. Oh. No, really, you've been doing a lot. We're, we're all doing what we can do, you know. Well, it, it, again, it's it's appreciated because I feel as though 
you know, I haven't really been able to participate as much as I, I was uh, the last couple of weeks. And it's just the way it is. But I, I, you know, you've been putting a lot of time in. So thank you. Well, you're welcome. Um, do you want me to read this? Read this letter. It's not too long. Sure. All right. This is from a David Minucci who is the Deputy Division Director at Mass DEP with the Bureau of Air and Waste, Business Reporting, Data, and Fiscal Operations. I say that 10 times fast. Yeah, <laughs> I better not. He's, yeah, he's based out of uh, Boston. So this is, let's see, so he says, actually he addressed it to Missy, hi Missy. Mass DEP is extending sustainable materials recovery program, parentheses, the SMRP uh, contracts to all cities and towns throughout the Commonwealth. SMRP grants offer funding to cities, towns, and regional government entities for recycling, composting, improving air quality, and reuse and, and reuse the so and source reduction activities. This contract will secure your place on our upcoming municipal master agreement and will authorize DEP to forward payments to Menden if you're awarded an SMRP grant during the period of July 1, 2022 through July 30th, 2029. Execution of this contract does not guarantee that an award will be made to the signatory entity. Then there's a breakdown of a what he calls a standard contract, where basically you we add our name, phone number, email, uh, and then we we would print and wet sign the contract. And then there's something called a contractor authorized signatory listing, CASL. Uh, this has to be it's a form that has to be notarized. Okay. Uh, says the wet sign contract and notarized signatory listing can then be scanned and emailed to me as attachments. As requested, I will forward a copy of the fully executed contract once it has been signed by our department signatory. Additional information or assistance is needed. Please feel free to contact me at the mobile number below. So I guess the question is, have we all have we always been a part of this? I don't know. Right? Yeah. Uh, there were two. Let me just take a peek at these attachments that are on this thing. Yeah, because I'm thinking. I mean, we we do recycle, but we yeah. don't compost. Um. And if it's a contract, uh, do we have to have the attorney put their eyes on it first? Well, that's a good point. I mean, we have the we have the ability to enter into a contract, but you know, we we need someone to read through it to understand the the legal implications. And it it, it almost sounds like this is kind of a minor thing because just being part of this agreement doesn't mean that you can get an award. No, it, it, you know, they intermix the term contract and also the word grants. So it's, right, it almost right. makes it sound like you're, okay, you sign on board, you're part of the process, and then depending on how things go for that period of time, uh, if an award can be given out to a particular community, um, that would be great, whatever the X amount of dollars would be. Right. It almost sounds like, you know, this is an opportunity to apply for grants and we'll make you aware of what grants come available. But you still have to apply to, you know, to have a shot at it. Right. So I, I guess the contract part of the conversation is what is a little confusing. Yeah, it's titled uh, one of the documents is titled Commonwealth of Massachusetts uh, Standard Contract Form. Yeah. And it's basically just, you know, where you put in information, you know, name, email. Um, and then you sign it. 
but yeah, I mean, it's uh, maybe something that should require the eyes of of legal. Well, yeah, or, I, I, I would think anything that has the, the, the title contract. Because it, it's not like we're purchasing a service for X number of dollars. Correct. Um, you know, and we decide, yep, we're, we're going to. Uh, you know, we're going to do that or not, or it's not like a, 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 an affiliated group that we're going to pay a membership fee to, to be a member. Right. Yep. Um, the, the word contract can have implications in both directions. So before, you know, before I signed something that was going to obligate the town, we definitely have to have a little advice. And it could be nothing. Right, right. This could be something that's been in play right along for years. And it's, it's just, just like a re up. It's a right, re up. Right. 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 Well, what I could try to do too is I could reach out to this gentleman. Maybe uh, he's offered up his mobile number as a, as a means to contact him, which I kind of like as opposed to just discussing something like this on email. Correct. Um, maybe I'll try giving him a call. Okay. And just see if he can enlighten, enlighten me. I'll just explain, you know, we're currently, you know, we're, as you, you might, you might, you might have known our previous or our, yeah, I guess our previous administrative assistant, Missy, you know, she's no longer with us and, you know, not being, from a board perspective, not really being familiar with what this is about, could you give me some insight on is this something that uh, we, you know, the town of Bennett has typically been involved with or, you know, that sort of thing, you know? Right. I mean, th there there were a lot of, um, a, a lot of groups, a lot of networks that we were involved with. Uh, right. A lot of them have all kinds of initials. <laughs> but, if if we didn't go to a conference or a meeting, you know, w we really weren't up to speed on everything that we were involved in. Right. Because we didn't need to be. No, true. Yeah. You know, because a lot of these, uh, you know, affiliations were educational um, places that, you know, you could get advice from. Mm -hmm. um, or just plain old networking groups. Oh yeah, who, who are you using for your trash pickup? Oh, oh, you you know, are you doing a subscriber based thing? It was just you know affiliations to um, bounce ideas off of and find out what was working for them. Right. So there there was no contract, so to speak, in a in a typical you know form. I mean, usually when there's a contract, there's a service and a consideration for the service. So oh, you sound like a legal eagle. <laughs> hey, there you go. <laughs> so the, you know, it, it almost sounds like the word contract uh, might not be uh, being used correctly. I like master agreement better. Right. Yeah, yep. the, the, the technical name is well the full name municipal master agreement yeah is how the uh email you know let off mm -hmm. on the subject but all right well, i can uh, reach out to this gentleman sounds good and i i can uh i can maybe uh make a call and see uh if i can get some information uh as to whether or not we were ever involved with this organization Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, all right, so the next thing in, on the agenda is update on vacant BOH position. Yeah. So do you know anything further or beyond um, the interviews we did? Um, I don't, and for the, for the purpose of our meeting, um, I'll say that, you know, uh, the three Board of Health members were able to uh, listen and participate 
in the uh, last um, phase of the interviewing process. Um, and I thought that there were, you know, three good, capable candidates. And uh, we're just waiting to hear basically from human resources, uh, you know, what worked out, what the end result is. Yeah, that's, that's kind of it in a nutshell. So we're moving forward. So that's good. Yeah. And I, you know, uh, Kim stated that, you know, the goal was to get this person on board um, the first Monday of May. Yeah, it's about just two weeks. Yeah. Yeah, whatever the first Monday in May is, I can actually look. I got a calendar in front of me. Um, whoop. I'm already moving ahead to June. Uh, looks like May 2nd is the first Monday of the month. Okay. So uh, we're, uh, we're looking forward to uh, getting started over. Cool. All right. Um, anything else, Tom? Old business? Um, I wouldn't say anything old, old business. I mean, I know we have a lot. There's just been a lot of uh, flow coming in from da various groups. Right. Entities looking at, looking for follow-up. I unfortunately haven't been able to be in the office in quite a while. I think I was there one day last week. Um, so I don't know if, do we know if any further um, on-site office um, support has been able to? Well, I, I believe there was an issue with uh, whether or not uh, Tracy had a key to get to the office. Yeah, that's it. And, um, um, I was in the office early this morning. Um, and the desk was still pretty full. With a lot of like, like unopened stuff, you mean? Yeah, a lo lot of mail. Uh, um, there okay. Was, there was a note on one envelope. It's, it almost looked, I, I can't tell you exactly what the note was. Um, I did read it, but almost like it was acted on. Whatever was in that envelope. Okay. I didn't have time to start going through things. I would, I just kind of went in to, to see, you know, if anything had moved. Okay. So the, by, like... by the, by the looks of the desk, it doesn't look like anybody sat there. Okay. Uh, unfortunately. Well, I guess we'll probably have to just kind of tackle items. Kind of one at a time as people start to come. I, I think that's what's going to happen. I think when we finally get someone there, um, it's going to be as people inquire about where something is, we're going to have to hope that we can, you know, get it resolved. Right. And uh, I know that, you know, on rain days, et cetera, when I can't be out on the road working, um, I'm definitely going to make every effort to poke my head in there and be whatever assistance or encouragement that I can be. Is it supposed to rain tomorrow? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, not till nighttime, pal. Uh, okay, checks. Um, but, you know, who, whoever takes the position is obviously going to need uh, our support and backing to um, get things in order. Oh, yeah, for sure. So, um, you know, I'm prepared to, you know, whenever time allows, I'm prepared to do that. Um, because uh, it, it, it's really important that we get things uh, back in order. But it still looks like the back room of a UPS. Oh, nice phrase. Yeah, I've heard it before. <laughs> All right, well. So, do we want to set a next meeting? Of course. Well, I we guess do. we could, and just uh, you know, we could give a shout out to AJ and let him know what we set. Yeah. No, uh, we're looking at uh, Wednesday, April twenty seventh. At 
7 p.m. And I'm going to invite the uh, woman from Lemonster that does the tobacco enforcement. Um, I'm going to put the contract extension for E.L. Harvey on the next agenda. Yeah. Um, so those are there's two things and uh, probably another update on the hazardous waste day based on what you find. And like I said, I'm going to try to Google some other companies in the meantime. Do you want to keep um, the BOH position on as a placeholder? Uh, why not? We should, depending upon when the selectmen's meeting is, we should have more info on that. Well, I know they're meeting uh, tomorrow night. Well, but I didn't see anything. I took a quick peek at their agenda. I didn't see anything specific to this position. However, they are going into an executive session. Okay, yeah, that almost sounds too quick because it, it does, you know, yeah. Yeah, because it, it, it sounds like uh, Shelley had to make the offer. Yeah. And obviously the offer has to be accepted. Yes, that's and, true. Yeah. And then the selectmen technically appoint the person the way I understand it. Yeah, they would they would be involved in appointing the individual, correct? So I'm I'm thinking that, that, that that's why, you know, Kim had a start date of the first Monday of May to allow that process to play out okay yeah well uh, part of it might have had to do with the fact that you know she's away too right well that doesn't mean the selectmen couldn't act on it oh that's true yeah and shelly at this point our hr person is handling the the offer this is true yeah um so you know i don't see a, any reason really for the wheels to stop turning no, you're right. Yeah. You know, at this point, I think we're, you know, um, I, I think it's just a, you know, matter of logistics. Once the offer is accepted, you know, just following the process. And I'm sure too, Kim would be, you know, although it might be limited, but would be checking back in or in contact. Yeah. From what with, I understand, there's a, a short period in that two weeks where maybe she can't be reached easily. Right. Um, just because of geographic location. Yep. Um, but on the front end and on the back end, it sounds like she's accessible. Yep. Okay. So, um, like I said, I don't, I, where, where it's sort of now in Shelly's hands, I, I don't see any reason for the wheels to stop spinning. Right here, yeah. Okay. So that's that's a good thing. Oh, agreed. Yep. Okay. All right. So we're gonna set our next meeting for seven o'clock April Wednesday, April twenty-seventh. We've got four things that we're gonna carry over. Um do we wanna carry over the municipal master agreement? Um we could. Okay. I don't think that would be a lengthy conversation, but we could. Yeah. Okay. So we got we got five things that are going to carry over uh, to the next um, next meeting. Okay. And you know, of course, anything else that comes up. Right. Oh. Please. Oh. Um, Hit me. Speaking of which, just remind me of something. Um, I don't know if you saw your email, uh, Ann Mazar had um, sent an email to us as board, uh, but then she also sent it to our private emails. Um, yeah, just, just was it today or yesterday? Something just today. About yeah, I, I did see that from her. And she was interested in, uh, it had to do with the town hall campus restoration. Yes. Um, yeah, I, I, did, uh, I did open that and read it. I can't say I concentrated on it. So hit me. Well, so let's see. So so Ann's email was um, just says here, I'm sending this application uh, to your home addresses in case you did not see the email. Uh, please let uh, Gemma, and I'll explain who she is in a second, 
know if she needs to send you more information and what the next steps are to have the permit approved. Uh, we're running up against the deadline of the town hall campus project grant deadline for when we need to spend the grant funds. I know you all swamp with BOH work, but if this could be put on your next meeting agenda and or approved, it would be greatly appreciated. Uh, yes, I, I, I did read that. Um, I don't completely understand it, but I did read it. So she's referring to the woman she's referring to. Her name is uh, Gemma Kite. Uh, she's a senior environmental engineer with the uh, Horsley Witten Group. Okay. Uh, based out of Sandwich, Massachusetts. Okay. Does this have something to do with the septic pipe? Yeah. So it says here, this email um, from Gemma says, we're pleased to submit our application to the Board of Health for the replacement of a septic line as part of the town hall campus restoration project. Please find the, find attached our completed application and the permitting plan set for the site. Please let me know if you have any questions or need any additional information at this time. Thanks. Have a great weekend. Okay. That, that came in from Gemma on Friday. Okay. And then she's included um, a couple of documents with the email. Um, the application itself, this is the, uh, you know, typical application for disposal system construction permit. Okay. Right. And the uh, other document is. So does, does Ann need us to waive a fee or do we need to get Tom Ryder to look at the plan? Well, the, the first thought I had was Tom Ryder from an engineering perspective. Yeah. Because um, they're submitting a plan, right? Yeah, so then uh, one of the attachments that Jim included, it's the uh, general title Town Hall Campus Restoration Permitting Plans um, Amended Mass. It's kind of a vicinity map, kind of like a Google map. Um, yeah. Part of it is also a... Uh, uh, some other elements included. There's, there's a, and looks like an engineer drawing. Okay. Of the breakdown of the campus of the town hall area. Um, a couple of different close-ups and specification mm -hmm. um, architectural drawings that are also part of it. Okay, so this must have to do with tearing down the old police station, I would think. Uh, well, I don't know. Is the, is because weren't is, they going to replace the pipe and they were going to leave a stub at one point? I'm not, I don't, I don't have any idea, to be honest with you. Uh, yeah, I really haven't been involved in this project yeah, at all. I remember when, um, I can't think of his first name, Morin, Oh, um, Donnie. Yes, Donnie. Donnie has spoke um, about, you know, obviously they have to connect the, they had to connect the new police station to the septic system. Yeah. But I thought when they tore down the, the old police station, they were just going to leave the stub. But it, it almost sounds like now they're replacing a pipe. So I don't know if something, well, didn't they find something when they were digging at one point that they didn't know about? Oh, yeah, Andy may know better. Yeah, I bet you Andy would know better. You're right. He's not with us tonight, unfortunately. Yeah, um, there was something I thought it had to do with the um, the levels of the of the trenching or something. Oh yeah, almost like right? the inlet. The inlet was a little bit lower than the outlet, or something. Right, right. So it wasn't working the way it was supposed to. Obviously. Yes. So maybe why they're going to replace the pipe so that they can they can raise the inlet higher than the outlet. Yeah, that could this could all be part and parcel of 
of that. Yeah. So I, I guess I don't completely understand Ann's request other than do we have to bless it with the engineer or do we have to waive a fee? Well, therein lies a, a question. I'm not sure either. Um, okay. And I mean, if she's running low on time, is this something that she needs a decision on right away or can it wait till the next meeting? Well, she does say, well, this can't, this only just came, her email only just came this afternoon. Okay. Uh, where she references that this could be put on your next meeting agenda. All right, so. So, I'm not factoring in this meeting, I would think that would be the next one we meet at the end of the month. All right, so what do we want to title that? Uh, Town Hall Campus Restoration. Town Hall Campus Restoration. Do we want to say Restoration Grant or leave it at that? Well, I'm see, I'm not sure what the grant was because um, Ann's calling it the Town Hall Campus Project Grant deadline. That's what she's kind of all right involved with. I'll just call so, it, I'll call it Town Hall Campus Restoration Project. Yeah, you could put slash, you know, grant deadline, something like that. Okay. There we go. But in the interim, uh, should this be moved to or brought to Tom Wright's attention? I will. Uh, I'll reach out to Ann. Okay. I have to call her on another town topic, so I will. Uh, I will reach out to Ann uh, maybe as soon as we get off this meeting, and then okay. I, can you, I can let you know whether or not it needs to be forwarded to Tom Ryder via uh, text. Okay. How's that? Yeah. Okay. Because I can, I can just take, um, I can take the plans and you know, send them to Tom. Yeah. If that's what you know. If they, if he needs to do something with them as well, from our perspective. And I guess, yeah, trying to find out specifically from Am what, um, you know, what she's looking for us to approve. Is it, right. is it the plan itself? She needs a, she's saying she needs approved. Maybe that's what she's saying. Sounds you know, in, good. Which, in which case that would make sense because the documents that Gemma sent. Yeah, would be one of the documents that Tom would typically put a signature on as a BOH engineer. No, nope, sounds good to me. Like I right? said, I'll reach out. I'll uh, I'll reach out to her as soon as we get done with this call. And uh, I will send you a text as to whether or not. Um, it needs to be uh, forwarded over to Tom Ryder. OK, and at the same time, I'll, I'll ask her if there's uh, if she's looking for a fee to be waived or something like that. Oh, right. Yeah, exactly. Right, right. Yeah, yeah only because if we're if we're prepared, I mean, not that it would it would be denied, but. Um, we'd have to probably vote on that. Yeah, probably that would, you know. Yeah, I'm thinking that we'd have to be a little more of a formal decision so that. Um, it's recorded and uh, it's understood why it was waived. Right, well, yeah, I would think common sense would say, you know, as a, as a town department, I know why would we, why wouldn't we waive the fee? You know, it's a town. Well, yeah, either that or we're going to, we're going to collect it in the left pocket and put it in the right. Yeah, no, I know what you're saying. Yeah, we have yeah, to it, do it as a matter of formality. Right, right. Yeah, and you know, true. There, there will be a. You know, if Tom gets involved, this would his services would be utilized. So yeah, there, therein lies the um, the invoicing element. Right. Yeah. Okay. Now it, it's very possible that. Well, uh, it's very possible that the um, there was already a septic plan. I mean, I don't think there was a new system installed, but. It, there may have been something that required um, a plan for that might have qualified under like a, a, a repair. Because like I said, I can remember something about, you know, connecting one line, disconnecting the other, leaving a stub, um, 
because you know things change. Right. But um, I will ask that question. Okay. So that we're prepared. Sounds good. All righty. Cool. Can I have well, a motion? Uh, yep. I have a motion to uh, adjourn the meeting for the evening. All right. And uh, I'll uh, step down and second it, I believe. Excellent. All in favor? Aye. Tom, aye. Always a pleasure, Tom. Absolutely, sir. Enjoy the All rest right. of your evening and uh, we'll talk soon, I'm sure. Yeah, I'm going to reach out to Ian right now. Okay, bud. All right. Good night. Good night. Thank you.